Hi, I'm Aiman. Welcome back to another video in our series on converting our patio to a three-season multi-purpose room. In our last video, we talked about attaching our deck to a structure. In our case, we're attaching it to a patio using <laughs> lag screws or structural screws. In this video, we're going to go on to the other side of the deck, and we're going to be talking about combining, also known as doubling, or also known as sistering joists or beams using a different type of screw. In this video, we're going to be talking about carriage bolts, and we're also going to be reminding you that structural screws exist. All right, so let's talk about the job that we're doing here. As you can see here, these two beams are right next to each other, and they're combined with each other. And like I said earlier, this combining is referred to as sistering or doubling the joists. In this case, this is called a flush beam. It's meant to be flush with this other beam. And it's, it's supposed to provide additional strength. And also in this case right here, we also have these two joists doubled. And that's for a different purpose. It's, it's, it's also for stre strengthening it. But in this case, the reason that, that we have these joists doubled is because we're actually like sort of dividing this deck into two smaller decks. And this just happens to be a byproduct of dividing this into two smaller decks. The reason that we divided this into two smaller decks is so that it was easier to build. So the reason that it would be easier is because the longest length of wood that they have at Home Depot is 16 feet, but the length of this patio is 17 feet. So by dividing this into two decks, we can utilize shorter lengths of wood for the deck rather than having to go out of our way to order a longer length of wood that would be like you know, 18 feet or 20 feet. In this way, you can use things that are 10 feet or 8 feet. Let's get back to the topic at hand here. We want to combine joists together. And when we combine joists together, we need to make sure that they stay together. Problems that can arise from them not staying together is um, uh, a loss of strength, but also just it being annoying. If these two were to break away from each other, and this can, this can happen due to the screws like falling out or due to people like dancing on it and disrupting, like pushing it away. What can happen if these two separate, as you move, these can rub against each other and squeak. So it's a bit annoying uh, and also weak if these two are not joined together. So we want to make sure that these joists or these beams are connected to each other. And that is the purpose of these carriage bolts. These carriage bolts go together with a washer and a hex nut. And they go together like this. Actually, in our case, it's like this to ensure that the joists stay together. The same thing goes with these structural screws. And in the case of the structural screws, you don't need a nut. You can just screw them in from this side and screw them in from the other side. Now, because you can only screw this in from one side, this is only applicable with these kinds of joists, where we can access them from both sides. However, in this case, we can't access this side of the joists. So carriage bolts would be more useful. So the carriage bolt is unique compared to regular bolts because, I mean, just take a look at it. It has no head to screw it in, which means that the only way to secure it is with the nut. But the reason that it's usable is because of this square right here. When you knock this into the wood, this square is going to secure itself and prevent it from spinning, which allows you to secure it using only the nut. Whereas if you only had a bolt, it would either require friction or you holding in that bolt in order to keep it from spinning while you're putting that nut in. So, just like those bolts on that side, or those screws, these bolts also have to be uh, arranged by, uh, they also have to be installed by, uh, by code. They also have to be 15 inches apart from each other and two inches from the top or the bottom. So, um, as for depth of the, 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 the bolts, they don't actually have to be um, too long. And if you want them to not stick out of the wood, in our case, you'll see that these bolts actually do stick out a bit. The reason why we, want, we stick them out is because we can put the knot on them. 
But if you don't want them to stick out of the wood, you can actually buy shorter ones. In our case, we have three and a half inches ones, but you can get three inches ones. And what you can do is in order to put that bolt on, you can actually drill a hole from the other side into the, into the wood. It's called a counter bore. And then you can put the knot on there inside the hole. But if you do that, you're affecting the integrity of the, the strength of the beam. So this is just a better idea just to um, go off the full length and then put the nut on it. Anyway, rambling aside, let's demonstrate how to actually install a carriage bolt. So as you can see with carriage bolts, they don't have a tip for you to drill them in, which means that we need to pre-drill a hole. In our case, you can see that this is a 3 8 inch diameter bolt, which means that we need a 3 8 inch drill. Let's get right to it. We're going to use this hole right here, and let's drill. Interesting. This is a very good X marks the spot. Oh yeah, hold on. I just realized, I just took the tip of tape off. Okay, <laughs> that's no big problem. Now we have our our hole pre-drilled, and I should be able to access it from the back. Uh, I know I know my dad was worried that I didn't go fully deep enough, but it looks like the the hole is shining through with light. So now we can get through with knocking the hole in through. And I guess even if I didn't go fully through, I could still knock it through. When you put this on, you need to make sure that you also have a washer. So don't forget to put the washer on when you install it. The carriage bolt is, is useful in cases where the carriage bolt is useful, is useful in cases where you can't access the other side of the joist that you're uh, fastening. In this case, we can't access this side, as I said earlier. And the reason why it's useful is because this secures itself on this side, so all you have to do is screw in the nut from the other side. You don't have to, uh, like, like um, do manual labor. Uh, I mean, that's not what I was saying. You don't have to put a tool on the other side. In this case, you only have to put the washer on. You see the washer, and then you put the nut on. And then uh, with the nut, all you need to do is, you don't really need to tighten it too much, probably with a handheld ratchet. All you need to do is just do it by hand. However, if you were able, able to access it from the other side, you wouldn't need to do this. You wouldn't need to use a carriage bolt because all you'd need to use is this kind of screw. And all you have to do is do it from this side. And then on the other side, you screw it in from this side. And I'll actually show you this uh, in a bit. But first off, let me, let me finish this. As you can see, uh, it is tight in there. And if I continue to tighten the nut, what's gonna happen is that the um, carriage bolt is actually gonna continue to go in deeper. Should I demonstrate that? Okay. So if I continue to tighten that nut, just watch that. It's gonna continue to dig into the uh, inside of the wood. So we don't need to keep it that much. I've heard many people like actually like to do that, but I think this is good enough. All right, so let's talk about the structural screw. Okay, so um, now we're going to demonstrate the use of the structural screw. In our case, this is what the screws, actually, why I put that down. This is what these screws look like. Just look really closely at these. These are not a stand, like the regular type of screw you see, like Phillips or flat. And they're not even Torx screws. Torx screws, by the way, are the ones that are six pointed. These are what the drill bits look like. But these ones are called spider screws. 
maybe you're more familiar than, with them than I am. But these have their own drill bit that you use for them. And we actually have, we actually bought these types of screws, these types of screws twice. Now the screws that these come in, the, the box that these screws come in, actually has this drill bit included with it. And we bought this kind of box twice. So we should have two of these. But we've actually, we actually lost it until uh, we, we found it like five minutes ago. But we've been looking for a bit, about 30 minutes now for this, this uh, small bit right here. And just for sake of comparison, this is what a torque screw looks like. And this is what a spider screw looks like. Ah, no, not screw, bit. So the cool thing about a spider bit is that when you put it on, the, the screw kind of stays in there. And that means that when you're drilling it in, you don't really have to guide it in. You just have to hold the thing. Whereas with a Phillips, the, the screw can fall off if it's not deep enough. So anyway, that out of the, that out of the uh, discussion, let's actually screw it in. So over here, we have marked where we're going to put in our uh, screw. We're going to put in one on the front here, and we're going to put one on the back here. They're still 15 inches apart, but this one's just on the front, this one's on the back. In this case, it works because we can actually access the back. In the case of the carriage bolts, those would only be necessary if we couldn't access the back. But anyway, let's put this on. I have the battery in there, let's go. Okay. Okay, let's put it in. And as you can see, because it is sharp at the end, it is self-driving. Hold on, let me make it make sure it's straight. I think this is right. And then we're gonna put it in just a tiny bit for good measure. And then on this side, how do I do this without glare? Okay, on this side, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. This one's a bit harder. I think this is straight. Okay. Oh, that's a bad idea, hold on. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you screw it on the back side and on the front side. So, let's talk about this. With the structural screw, you can, you can join two bolts together as long as you do it from the front and from the back side. With the carriage bolt, you're always screwing it in from the front side and then you're putting a nut on from the back. In the last video, I was talking about comparing lag screws with structural screws. And in that case, there was a clear winner because lag, uh, structural screws are not only, um, I guess, the same price as lag screws, but they're also much more convenient to use because you don't have to pre-drill a hole. When comparing um, structural screws to carriage bolts, however, they serve a different purpose. They're used for sistering joints together. And because of this different purpose, there is no clear winner. Carriage bolts are used for a different, uh, in a different situation than you would use structural bolts, uh, structural screws. These ones you use only, I, I guess you, you use them when you can access both sides of the, the sister joints. Carriage bolts you use if you can you can only access one side of them. So there's no clear winner in this debate. All right, so for these these, these screws come in different packages. In this case, we have a twelve. Uh, this is how many? Twelve screws in this plastic package, and in boxes it comes in fifty. And you can even buy them in bigger packages. But in any case, when you're buying uh, structural screws instead of lag screws, you always want to make sure that you buy the the screws that replace the type of lag screws that you need. What I mean by this is that, for example, the requirements by code for the lag screw is that it has to be, for a ledger beam, is that it has to be a half inch thick um, uh, lag screw. So that means that if you buy a structural screw to replace that, you have to find one that says that on the box, it can replace a half inch lag screw. Now, in the case of sistering joints, by code, the minimum width for that is 3 eighths of an inch. So in our case, we want to buy something that says replaces 3 eighths inch lag screw. 
So my dad also had an interesting thought about like which one is better. He says that structural screws are better because when they secure themselves or fasten the bolts together, they only carve out as much space as they need for the threads. Whereas with um, lag screws, you have to pre-drill a hole. So there's a bit more wasted space. Which, if you want to talk about in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I think like, the whole like, I think just like my first reaction to it is like pressure. There, while there is more air, uh, more volume taken up by the lag screw, there's also more space or more vol uh, more surface area for pressure to act on that lag screw. Whereas with this one, it's much it's a much smaller area, so the pressure is more concentrated. So I'm thinking that even though this is stronger and more um, Hold on. Even though these are made of much more strong material than these lag screws, that this one still undertakes a higher amount of pressure than this does. And that's why there's not really a winning between these two. So if you want to discuss it in the comments, feel free to. But with that being said, this segment of the video is done. Because today, we talked about sistering, combining, or doubling up joints using... Wait, where is it? Oh, using carriage bolts or using structural screws. And in our next video, we're either going to talk about putting foam into crevices or we're going to be putting the, um, the plastic sheeting underneath the floor in order to protect the bottom of our room from bugs. And for now, I'm Ayman and where is he? And thanks for watching. Please like or come subscribe and look at our videos on I and Iman, especially our videos on converting our patio to a three season multi purpose room. And also, please check out that video uh, that we did on the ledger screws and the structure, the, the lag screws, because that's a really interesting video. In that, in that video, like I said, there was a, a heated debate about lag screws versus structural screws, and in the end, structural screws won. And just to remind you, in this debate, between carriage bolts and structural screws, it's really situational. And I'll leave you that with that for now. I'm Ayman, that's Burton. And signing out. Peace.